Ed Citronelli is touching lives throughout North America and around the world with the saving and healing gospel of Jesus Christ. Through Miracle Crusades, television and social media programs, this ministry is making a difference for the kingdom of God. Stay connected with Ed Citronelli and experience the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit through prophecy, healing, and deliverance. Ed Citronelli Ministry, touching people, touching nations, and touching the world for the glory of Jesus Christ. 1 King 13, verse 1. We're going to read the first 10 verses. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. The word of the Lord says, And behold, a man of God went from Judah to Bethel by the word of the Lord. And Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. Then he cried out against the altar by the word of the Lord. And say, oh, altar, altar, thus says the Lord. Behold, a child Josiah by name shall be born to the house of David. And on you he shall sacrifice the priests of the high places who burn incense on you. And men's Bones shall be burned on you. And he gave a sign the same day, saying, This is the sign which the Lord has spoken. Surely the altar shall split apart, and the ashes on it shall be poured out. So it came to pass when King Jeroboam heard the saying of the men of God who cried out against the altar in Bethel that he stretched out his hand from the altar saying, Arrest him! Then his hand which he stretched out towards him withered so that he could not pull it back to himself. The altar also was split apart and the ashes poured out from the altar according to the sign which the men of God had given by the word of the Lord. Then the king answered and said to the men of God, please entreat the favor of the Lord your God and pray for me that my hand may be restored to me so the man of God entreated the Lord and the king's hand was restored to him and he became as before. Then the king said to the man of God, come home with me and refresh yourself and I will give you a reward. But the man of God said to the king, if you were to give me half of your house, I would not go in with you. Nor would I eat bread nor drink water in this place. For so I was commanded me by the word of the Lord, saying, You shall not eat bread, nor drink water, nor return by the same way you came. So he went another way, and he returned not by the way he came to Bethel. Now quickly, Elder, read for us First Samuel. Just Four verses there. Chapter 7. Verse 7. First Samuel. First Samuel. Chapter 7. Beginning with verse 7 through 11. One, two, three. And go. when the Philistines heard that the children of Israel were gathered together in Mizpah, the lords of the Philistines went up against Israel. And when the children of Israel heard it, they were afraid of the Philistines. And the children of Israel said unto Samuel, Cease not to cry unto the Lord our God for us, that he will save us out of the hand of the Philistines. And Samuel took a suckling lamb and offered it for a burnt offering 
holy unto the Lord. And Samuel cried unto the Lord for Israel, and the Lord heard him. And as Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to battle against Israel. But the Lord thundered hey. with a great thunder ka, ya, 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 on that day upon the Philistines uh -huh. and discomfited them and they were smitten before Israel. And oh. the men of Israel went out of Mizpah and pursued the Philistines and smote them until they came under Bekah. Lift up your hands to heaven. Say, my God, my, God. my Father and my Lord. I hear your word. I hear your word. And every altar, and any altar that, has that has been raised up to give me trouble. To give me trouble. Rub my peace. Rub my peace. Let every altar. Let every altar. According to your word. According to your word. Happen to what happened to that altar in Bethel. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every altar. Making noise against my life. Making noise against Hear me. the voice of the Lord. Hear the voice of the Lord. Crack. Crack. Break. Break. And split it too. And split it through. In the name of Jesus. And in the name of Jesus. Every demonic item. Every demonic item. Sacrifice on the altar. Sacrifice on the altar. Calling my name. Calling my name. Let it catch fire. Let in the, name of Jesus. in the name of Jesus, say you demonic altar, you demonic altar. activated against my life. Activated against my life. Hear, the Hear the voice of the Lord. Hear the power of God. Hear the power of God. Say, oh Lord, oh Lord. thunder with your mighty thunder, the, the mighty thunder. against every evil altar. Against every altar. Being used against my peace. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now clap your hands together seven times. Come on. Have a seat right now. I want to speak to you on deliverance from evil altars. Deliverance from evil altars. Pay close attention now. Look, this is not an American society. This is the church of Jesus Christ in America. And the Lord has raised up a church in this hour to confit the devil and all that are planning destruction against your life. You must read the obituary of your enemies before they go to their next birthday. I'm speaking prophetically to somebody. But we're not supposed to pray like that. We're supposed to pray for our enemies. I'm praying for my enemies to die. I'm fulfilling scripture. <laughs> this one, sometimes I say, Elder, Elder, please. Bishop, they have to die. I say, wait. Bishop, they have to die. Wait, wait, let's, let's. <laughs> the Bible says pray for your enemies, right? So I do. <laughs> let their feet walk no more on the earth. And let their children be fatherless in the name of Jesus. So I'm praying. Deliverance from evil altars. Ladies and gentlemen, God, somebody say God, has put your family together for enjoyment, for protection, for companionship. God is a God of families. But I want you to know that there are some people Consulting evil powers to wreak a havoc against you and your family. I said there are some people, sons of Belial, that they have sold themselves to demons. 
to wreak havoc on your peace, on your children, on your finances, on your health. I want you to understand. They have sold themselves to give you no peace. There's only one prince of peace. And that prince is not their prince. That prince of peace is your prince. So you're supposed to have peace. And those that want to pursue your peace. They must be fed. A spoonful of calamity in the name of Jesus. Are you ready to spoon fill them of calamity? There are people that have some that suffer such. They consult evil spirits at evil altars to bring your demise. Are you listening to me? They don't need to live next to you. Sometimes they do. They don't need to live in your neighborhood, but sometimes they do. They don't need to be your family members, but guess what? Huh. They don't even need to, to live in your country. They can use their altars all the way in another country to bring havoc against your joy and your peace. But the Lord has raised up the Lord Jesus Christ so that you may fire back. So that you may boomerang every demonic ascending they have sent against you. Every demonic arrow must go back to sender and kill their children. Kill their family. Kill their grandpa. Kill their grandma. Kill their aunties. Am I talking to the church that is militant or no? Today, we must be delivered from evil altars. Here in the Bible, we read about altars. We saw King Jeroboam using evil altars to summon some powers. And then we saw Samuel using good altars also to summon some powers. So altars can be used for good and for What then are altars? Number one, altars are elements, places, design for sacrifice, for worship. And you find that throughout the Bible. Altars were constructed in a specific way. Sometimes they were made of, 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 of dirt. Sometimes they were made of hewn, hewn stones. You know, hewn stones. That they would bring out the stone. Not using any uh, machinery or anything like this. Sometimes they were made of, of, of bricks. Ladies and gentlemen. Altars are constructed for the worship of God or the worship of idols. And we need to understand that any altar constructed for the purpose of idolatry will incur the wrath of Jehovah. That's why we pray that whoever is using evil altars against your peace, their bones must burn on that same altar in the name of Jesus. Ah, uh, I don't know if people understand what I said. You should have said a loud amen on that one. Their bones must burn on their own altars in the name of Jesus. Sit down. No peace for them that want to rob your peace. Somebody said, no peace for them. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, altars are used for spiritual to conduct spiritual transaction. Somebody say spiritual transaction. <laughs> altars were also used as medium of worship, right? Remember Abraham, he always would raise an altar. Isaac also, everywhere he go, he raised an altar. Jacob, everywhere he went, he raised an altar. David, Gideon, Moses, they always raised Elijah to summon powers from heaven. What did he do? He rebuilt 
the altar of the Lord in Mount Carmel. May the altar that, that the devil is using be destroyed. And may the altar of the Holy Ghost be renewed in your life. Get ready for powers of God to come down upon you. God will answer your enemies. I say God will answer your enemies. Any witch, wizard, buffalo that is calling upon their God. Your God will consume them by fire. Put your hands together if you believe it. Ladies and gentlemen, an altar also was used to sacrifice animal. Sometimes they use the altar of Molech to sacrifice babies. That's why the God of abortion is a demon. His name is Molech. Oh, you don't believe that one? Huh? Demons begin to talk. I said, who are you? Uh, uh, I'm more like, I said, hey, why? I, I drove up to have seven abortions. I said, hey. Altars were raised for sacrifices of animals. Sometimes for human beings, sometimes for babies. I want you to understand that altars were placed for bloodshed to call and summon demon power. Altars, ladies and gentlemen, were dining tables for demon spirits. That's why they used to bring food to altars. How many of you, listen, in Santeria, Caribbean witchcraft, African witchcraft. Uh, I remember my grandmother was a high priestess in African witchcraft. Uh, and I used to hate to go to her, I was little. I didn't know what God had for me in the future, but I used to hate to go to the house. Not knowing. She had a, a room, a big altar. And in that room, on the altar, she always had apple, eh, fruit, water, liquor, big bottle, uh, cigars. Am I talking to somebody here? Altars are used for satanic dining tables. That's why you see fruit. That's why you see liquor. That's why you see water. Huh? Now, that's why the Bible says, do not partake of the tables of demons. Do not eat anything sacrificed to idols. Because whoever you eat with, you raise covenant with them. That's why don't eat with your enemies. The Bible is very clear. Do not eat anything sacrificed to idol. Because when you eat it, you become their partners, their covenant, their people that will walk with them together without you knowing it. Every altar that they're bringing food, to empower the demons against you. That altar will catch fire in the name of Jesus. Somebody say it will catch fire. 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 Will catch fire. Ladies and gentlemen. Altars. Are spiritual bureau of exchange. In other words I will sacrifice this. And you will give me that. Have you seen that one before? It's an exchange bureau. It is a place where contact is made with the spirit world, whether good spirit or bad spirit. Are you with me? It is a place of spiritual fellowship with clean or unclean spirits. In other words, when Jacob built an altar at Bethel, it was the angel of God who descended and ascended. Ladies and gentlemen, if we build a demonic altar, there will be heavy demonic traffic in your house. Are you listening to me? An altar, my brothers and sisters, is a place where covenants are made, whether with God or with Satan. 
Are you following me here? Get ready. I feel the power to break some demonic altars today here in the name of Jesus. I feel the anointing and authority to capture altars that are bothering you at the night in the name of Jesus. Sit down. I also want you to know that an altar is a place, somebody said a place, of deliberation, a place of decision. It is also a place of action, whether negative or positive. I how you read two scriptures. First King chapter 13 with King Jeroboam activating his evil altar. And then in Samuel chapter 7, right? Activating good altar. They both had results. There is good altar and? An altar just to continue sharing with you. Can be raised to bless. Can be blessed to destroy. Can be raised to promote or pull you down. Can be raised to wreak havoc or to bring peace. An altar can be used to encourage you or discourage you. An altar sometimes is used to frustrate your peace. We see this all through the Bible, Old and the New Testament. You remember the story. Of Simon the sorcerer. In the book of Acts chapter 8. The Bible says that in the city of Samaria. There was a magician. A sorcerer. A juju. That he had that city locked down. With his demons. Surely he had an altar. Somewhere in that city. The altar of Satan was in Samaria. And everybody was under the power of the demon that was working with Simon the sorcerer. But a greater power entered that city one day called the power of Holy Ghost through a servant evangelist called Philip. And Philip, he preached Christ. And he began to cast out demons. He began to pray ascetic prayers over the city. And the Bible says that even Simon said, hey, this power is too much. May your God also show that his power is more than the power of the devil. Put your hands together if you believe it. <laughs> Philip went in with ascetic prayers. Huh? Did he negotiate? Did he ask permission? Huh? Oh, can I preach in the city? Can I cast out devils? Can I heal the sick? Did he? You don't need permission. When God is on your side, I said, when God is on your side, you have the license to ransack the devil's camp. May you ransack the devil's camp in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody, put your hands again together for Jesus. I don't ask demons, hey, hey, can I please cast you out? Can I cast you out today or, or should I come back tomorrow? Have you ever seen me asking? You ransack. Huh? You ransack. I say you have to ransack. No ask question. So why are you here? I came to take what's mine. Who let you in? Me. Who let you in? Holy Ghost. Who let you in? The blood. Who let you in? The name. Who let you in? The resurrection. Who let you in? The king of kings. Somebody say yes. Somebody say yes. yes. Are you happy this morning? Yes, Are you happy in the back this morning? Let me yes, see your hand. People in the back, people in the back, people in the back. Somebody shout and say, I am happy. I am happy. Ladies and gentlemen. Samuel. The people of Israel were in trouble. We read it. And the people said the Philistines are going to, 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 hey, they're going to eat us. 
Samuel, see, always go to the man of God for deliverance. They criticize us. They say this, that. But when they're in trouble, guess what? Okay. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> it's okay. We'll still pray for you. We hold no grudges. No man of God, no woman of God should hold grudges. Somebody say amen. Samuel, can you pray for us? Do not stop crying out for God, to God for us. Because the Philistines, they're going to wipe us out. The Bible says that Samuel sacrificed a lamb. Now you know he was using an altar. Ah, watch this. As I said, an altar can be used to summon good powers or negative. In this case, Samuel raised an altar to communicate with the spirit realm. To conduct transaction between heaven and earth. And what came down was not a negative black power. What came down was the power of the God of Israel. And the Bible says that God thunder against the enemy of his people. I speak that God will thunder against your enemies today. Against your demonic attack today. Against your situation that are troubling you today. Holy Ghost! He thunder. And as we begin to pray for you, God will begin to thunder. Get ready. Your enemy will run from you. There will be this conflict by the blood of Jesus today. I said there will be this convicted by the blood of Jesus today. People say, hey, prophet pray for me. Hey, there, there's a witch in my job that she's doing hey, witchcraft. Hey, I get headache. Uh, 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 my money uh, uh, this, that. I say, hey, how long you been saved? Oh, I've been saved 31 years. Hey, Is that, that, that witch at your job? Yeah, she, she's only been there one year. She, she, since one year, I, I have a headache. I, I have the pain. I, I, I see things moving in my stomach. Uh, my finances are, are in shambles. Uh, my children, they're rebelling. I say, hey, hey, hey preach, hey, hey, pray for me. I have asked people say, hey, hey, how much do, does it take? I'll, I'll pay you anything for you. I say, hey, when they say that, I shut them down. They're trying to buy the grace. When I see an email that my office gets like that, can you ask the prophet how much he charges? I said, don't show me that email. I can't help that person. I can't help them. No, no, I can't help you. If you think that you can pay me, 40, I've been 40 days fast, 75 days, 88 days, not even sleeping in the same bed with my wife. For you to pay me what? What are you going to pay me? Ah. Huh? Somebody said no. It won't, somebody said it won't work. So, when God is summons, somebody say things must happen. Must happen. Altars are used for good and for bad. You know what? Lift up your hands right now. Say every altar of the devil. Every altar of the devil. Erected against my life. Against my family, against my family, against my business, against my business, against my peace, against my peace, against my health, against my health, against my career, against my career. Let it be demolished by fire. Let it be demolished. Open your mouth for six seconds and demolish that altar. Six seconds. Demolish, demolish, demolish every altar being constructed against your career, against your destiny. Let it be demolished by the God that thunders from heaven. Let it be demolished by the God that thunders. Ayababa Teresa. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. Sit down. Say neighbor. Say I refuse. I refuse to be a prisoner. Of local altars, of local altars. Regional, altars. regional altars, city altars, city altars. State, altars. state altars, national altars, national altars. International, altars. international altars, 
shall refuse to be a prisoner of any of those altars. Say in the name of Jesus Christ. Sometimes they seal contracts, covenants, agreement by sacrificing with blood on the altar of wicked spirits. Somebody say wicked spirits. And as I said, sometimes they sacrifice food to pacify, to engage, to enlist the support of demon powers. And again, that's why the Bible says, do not eat anything sacrificed to who? To idol. Somebody say idol. idol. Pay attention now. Sometimes they will write your name. That's all they need. They put it on the altar of demons. Watch. The demon connected to that altar will read that name and him and demons working with him will go out to find you. Eh? My grandmother, I remember when I was in high school and then college, first year in college, then the Lord said, Holy Ghost fire for that one. Then the Lord said, this one. <laughs> What? There was something she did. My wife knows what it was because I told her my past. My mother went to my grandmother. My grandmother said, just give me her name. Remember, I didn't know anything about these things. She took her name and put it on her altar. My brothers and sisters... After I got married, through a friend, Dania, that we both know, who also knew her, I happened to see that common friend, and I said, hey, whatever happened to so-and-so? She said, my brother, you don't want to know. I said, what happened? I have forgotten about my mother, uh, my grandmother, witchcraft, maneuvering. She said, you don't want to know. I said, no, what happened? She said, the, she got married. And she got four girls. And the husband that she's with is one of the major drug dealers in Manhattan. And he beats her 24-7. She has no peace. She's bruised everywhere. She, she's, she's, she's a mess. Then I remember that her name I didn't know anything about this thing after I became a believer I began to pray for her deliverance amen, 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 amen. when they put your name on the altar they can put an article of clothes your undergarment huh? a piece of your nail That's why I said to my wife, she, she comes. I don't know why women are so careless. She's coming. Shaka. And the hair falls. You know, women sometimes they shed, right? And I say, hey, I, look, look, honey. Pick it. Cover it with the blood. Flush it. Say, one day they'll take your hair. Look, when I go to the barber, I say, hey. I said, okay. <laughs> hey! They'll take your hair. Anything that belongs to you. Your picture. Your name. A drop of your blood. A strand of your hair. A piece of your nail. And the demon connected to that altar. See? All of these items, the hair, the contains your DNA, your blood, 
and they put it through their satanic uh, 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 laboratory to find out who this belongs to. Then they go out to find you. It may take them a little while, but they will locate you through their satanic means. Every satanic laboratory analyzing your hair, let it catch fire. Let it catch fire. If they're analyzing your blood, let it catch fire. Analyzing your nails, let it catch fire. Analyzing your picture, let it catch Are you, are you listening to me? They sacrifice these things. They are able, when they put these things and they find you, they begin to follow you, monitor you. They begin to monitor you from their quarters. And then they begin to concoct the methods to influence your life in a negative way. Huh? Are you listening somebody here? They begin to monitor you. They begin to, to listen. Listen, once they find you, whether you're a Christian or not, that's why you need to get up and pray prayers. Some of you, you sleep too much. Eh? That's why you're in trouble all the time. That's why you come to the service for, for, for prayers. The prophet pray for me. It's because you're, pray, you, you're sleeping. When you're supposed to be praying, you're sleeping. Huh? My bishop boy said, he said, there's people in the body of Christ that, that God can use and the devil can use. I said, hey, how's that? He said, when, when God wants to use them, they are doubling somewhere. And then when, when Satan wants to use them, they, well, they're praying somewhere. <laughs> God can use them, Satan can use them. <laughs> once they find you, they put your information into their demonic data system, database system. Are you listening? They create a file against you. I know this is like a little far-fetched because uh, Hollywood has been telling you that these things don't... Sometimes Hollywood do know more than the church. <laughs> huh? They'll put... Their, your information into their database. They create a file. That's why when you pray, you must pray against every demonic file that they have created against you. Lift up your hands and pray this prayer. Say every demonic file. Every demonic file. With my name on it. With my name on it. You demonic file. You demonic file. Let the fire of the God of Elijah. Let the fire of the God of Elijah. Come upon you. Come upon you. Catch fire. Catch Open your mouth for five seconds and command that fire to catch fire. Prayer like thunder, prayer like thunder in this place. Let that fire catch fire. Whatever fire they have constructed with your name on it, let it catch fire. Let it catch fire. Fire, 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 fire. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Ladies and gentlemen. Once they have located you, located you, they use these altars to remote control your life. You say, how? Look, I'm not going to be around for, for, forever. Learn it now. This will be in video. They will use altars to remote control you. What do you mean? They'll come before the altars. Watch this. They will take your picture or something that looks like you or connected to you. And sometimes they'll take a dagger or pins and they begin to puncture your head. And then you say, ah, headache, headache, headache in your house. Hey, this headache, where is coming from? Then you come to service. Huh? Uh, this headache, I don't know. I don't suffer from headache, but this thing eh, all of a sudden came. Why? They are remote controlling you from the altars. Ah, huh? from the altars. From the altars, they begin to remote control you. That's why there are women that, that they cannot have babies because at the altars they have taken a, a doll and they put your name on that doll.
thou and they named that thou your name and then they sow the private part of that thou and what happens to the thou happens to you in the physical we need to pray somebody said we need to pray against demonic altars say you demonic altar hear the voice of the Lord hear the voice of the Lord as God is in heaven as God is in heaven you cannot exist anymore you cannot exist anymore catch fire catch open fire. your mouth and release fire, fire. against any fire. altar they are using fire. against you catch open your fire. mouth open your mouth for five fire. seconds fire. prayer Prayer in this place. Prayer in this place. Let Sakaba Shata. Every altar they are using to remote control you, to block your life, to destroy you. Let it catch fire. 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 You that are watching me, let that altar catch fire. Whatever altar they're using, you altar catch fire. In the name of Jesus Christ, put your hands together for the Lord. Are you learning something? Now, there are different types of altars used by satanic powers. Are you ready? Huh? Types of altars. I call these altars Crossroad altars. What is crossroad altars? Uh -huh. They'll go at midnight or 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. In the middle of cross streets. You know cross streets? And in the middle of cross streets, they'll stand there. Huh? And they begin to release incantations against you, against your family, against your children, against your career, against your business, against your destiny, against your job, against your health. Why? Because they begin, see crossroads signify north, south, east, west. In other words, they want to corner your life. And they are summoning powers from the four corners of the earth. And it is a perversion of the cross of Jesus. These are crossroad altars. You need to pray against crossroad altars. They stand at the crossroad at midnight and they release incantations of accidents. They plant the demons of accidents there. And then the next day, the daylight day, accidents will begin to take place right on that crossroad one after the other. May the Lord fight for you and whatever accident they want to put against you, let it die by the God that thunders from heaven. Somebody say Holy Ghost! Holy Ghost! Crossroad altars. Look, 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 look. As you are approaching the last days, God is looking for a militant church. Finish, they've, they've finished one, one. They'll start again because they need to do it uh, ten times. <laughs> and the demon is laughing. <laughs> Somebody say no. No. Number two, what is another type of altar? Ladies and gentlemen, this is what I call tree altars. Tree altars, what is that? They are demons. Of trees, living trees. Not in America. Who told you? You think demons cannot? Ah. Now that only happened in Africa. Okay. So then why are you here today? You're living in America. Tree altars are altars that are placed because in that tree, there are demons that live inside. In fact, there are witches and jujus that they go inside the tree to have their meetings. In a tree, inside the tree, you say, but hey, 20 of them, 40 of them, 50 of them, inside a tree. You say, no. That makes no sense. That's the problem. Because you're trying to use your senses. 
The natural mind cannot understand the things of the spirit. Because they are spiritually the three altars. Sometimes they'll take something from you. I remember I had a case. And the Lord revealed to me this, this woman. She could not have babies for like, she was married for like 10 years. No babies. And the Lord revealed to me that they had taken when she was a teenager or something, 13, 14 years old. Somebody, a local witch, somebody that she knew took her undergarment with, she be, with, with her first discharge. The first discharge in a pad. She took it and buried it under the tree. And buried her pregnancy forever. Had the Lord not revealed the plans of the devil, that woman still would be bound. But that day she got deliverance. She went back. And I believe she has now two bouncing baby. Hallelujah. Three altars. We need to pray against three altars. It's another type of altar called what I call photographic altars. These are altars that are constructed and they put your family picture, your picture, your wedding picture, individual picture, any picture, so that you will begin to receive torment, afflictions, difficulty, and get even killed if they could. Many marriages have been destroyed by photographic altars. They take their wedding picture and put it there. And right before they put it on the photographic altar, they take the photo and they split. You have the husband and the wife taking picture for, for uh, uh, reception. They're in love. And they split the picture in half. And then they release incantation. Let this marriage be as this picture is now. By the time you know it, problem. Problem. Uh, 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 pastor, uh, uh, we need counseling. I said, no. No, why? Because, uh, you know, uh, divorce. Uh, <laughs> I said, no. Pray. Photographic altars. Photographic altars. Again, they take your picture in the, into the realm of the spirit and they do with that picture. Hey, lift up your hands and pray this prayer. Every picture Every of mine. Every picture of mine. Put in any photographic altar. Put in any photographic altar. Let my picture disappear by fire. Open your mouth and command your picture to disappear. Let it disappear, let it disappear, let it disappear, let it disappear. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. There's another type of altar that I call the image altar. Somebody say image altar. Okay, what is the image altar? They take something that symbolizes you. Eh? <laughs> How many of you have ever heard of voodoo dolls? They take something that symbolizes you. And the demon attached to that altar. See, the incantation is to make commands and requests for the demons to carry out. We Christians, we don't do incantation. We do declaration and decrees. And the angels of God, according to Psalms 103 verse 20, they go out and they carry out our declaration. They understand the principle of angelic hosts carrying out commands. So what do they do? They don't make declaration. They make incantation. But it's the same principle. Watch this. David, can we put a scripture here? Somebody, okay. Psalms 103 verse 20. Watch this. Watch this. I'm teaching you something. Get ready. Your life will never be the same. I speak to about 72 people here. 
your life after today will never be the same I speak as a prophet in my office your life will never be the same somebody put your hands together three times and say I receive it I receive it I receive it I receive it, I receive it. watch this bless the Lord ye his what that excel in strength that do his what all right hearkening unto the voice of his this is important pay attention that's why be careful what you say, what you speak. Agree with the word. Speak over you what the word says. And the angels must carry out what you said that is connected and agrees with the word. How are you? Uh, I'm not doing too well. Nothing works out for me. I'm sick and tired. My life is a mess. The angels are standing by. They say, no, no, we, we don't recognize that word. We don't recognize that one. Because that's not how our God talks. Why? Because it, go back to the scripture 20. They only hearken unto the voice of his word. That's why when I say to you, I, I do it. Say, you are blessed. I'm trying to put something inside your vocabulary. Because that's what the word says you are. Huh? I said you are blessed. And the word says you are blessed. So the angels hearken to that one. And then they go out to make sure that that one that you said, you will see it in your life. You shall see it also in your life as of today in the name of Jesus. Am I speaking to somebody of faith here? I said that there will be about 77 people that that blessing you will see at beginning today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Watch verse 21. Are you learning something? Or should I just finish? Go home. Okay. <laughs> After today, that which that has moved in your, in, your, in your building. They will be tormented. By this week. They will be renting you hall. To move out of your building by fire by force. Uh, prophet, the witch uh, on top of my, my the floor. Uh, she uh, lives up uh, uh, on top. Uh, she's, she's no peace for me. I say, hey. Hey. Okay, who do you want to move? You want to move or you want her to move? No, eh, no, she needs to move. I said, so move her. Move her. But, but how can I move her? I said, how long you been in this church? Eh, I've been here for three years. You still don't know how to pray to move somebody out. Watch this. Bless ye the Lord. All ye his hosts. Ye ministers of his. That what? What do they do? What is God's pleasure concerning you? For you to die? For you to be sick? For you to be tormented? For you to suffer? For you to go down? For you to live stagnation? For you to be defeated all your life? That's not his pleasure, is it? So the angels, when you talk like that, they cannot help you because that's not, you're not talking the pleasure of God concerning your life. What is the pleasure of God? Hey. As far as my eyes will see, that city is mine. That house is mine. I, I need to change my car. That one is mine. What is the pleasure of the Lord? By his stripes, I cannot be sick. I am healed. I don't care what the report of the doctor says. I am healed by the stripes. My body is the temple of God. God cannot live in a broken down temple. God cannot live in a shut down temple. God cannot live in a destroyed temple. I need to walk in the power of the word. The word says, I am healed. Then the angels go out and get what they do. They make sure that you get. Hey, prophet, but, but the doctor says, I said, so, 
if the doctor already said why are you coming to me yeah but you know uh, uh, you know so you can pray because, but, but okay but what did the doctor say no but 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 the doctor said that that that, that there's no cure that i have to uh, take this medication uh, 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 but okay so listen i'm gonna pray and the lord is gonna do this no 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 but the doctor said uh, uh, i said so look either the doctor said or jesus says you can uh, look at the next verse Bless the Lord, all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord. Huh? So when you talk, the word of God, what God's pleasure is that his word says concerning you, the angels must hearken and carry it out. That's why I can never live in poverty. If I find it in the scripture, I speak it over my head. Huh? I can. My wife said, hey, 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 uh, uh, uh you know, uh, I said, listen, we're going to do this, this, this. She said, hey, hey, what about, I said, hey, 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 hey. This is between me and God, okay? You just enjoy it. Somebody say, yes, I'm going to enjoy this one too. There's another altar. What I call the reporting, I'm going to go fast now. The reporting altars. Somebody say reporting altar. This is the, the, the altar that they report your name. They report your address. They report your birthday. And the demons get that information that are connected to that altar. And they go out to pursue you. There's another altar call, called the clothing altar. Somebody said clothing altar. This, this, these are altars that they bring, as I mentioned earlier, items of clothing. So that the demons can carry out evil purposes against you. There's also river altars. Somebody say river altars. These are altars that serve marine demons. Marine spirits. Somebody said marine spirit. These altars, they summon marine powers to sit on your head. To sit on your finances. That's why sometimes, and then, and then, and then you, uh, yeah, I can't pay tithes because, uh, because last time you dropped God. And then you say, okay, next week I'll, I'll double it. Come on. You know you're not going to double anything. <laughs> huh? Next week I, I, I'll pay this one. And next week, I'll put it uh, there. <laughs> Somebody said, <laughs> Holy Ghost fire. All right. What are altars? Marine altars. Riverine altars. They work with marine spirits. These are the marine powers they summon to sit on your head. To sit on your marriage. To sit on your career. River altars. There's also forest altars. Somebody said forest. All right. Forest altars. These are spirits that are called spirits of the forest. They raise up our altar in the wilderness, in the forest, and they summon forest spirits. These spirits are wicked. These are the spirits that they get you. Yeah, they, look, they, they take your mind so you can get lost. Dementia, Alzheimer's. These are the spirits that you're always losing something. You, you, you lose your car, your, your credit card, your wallet. I mean, everything you have, you lose. And you never find it. Huh? You lose your keys. You get another set. You lose it tomorrow. Huh? You put something here. By two hours later, hey. Where did I put that? These forest spirits, they are wicked. And they are the one responsible to steal things from your life. Lift up your hands and pray this prayer. Every forest altar, Every forest altar. connected to any forest spirit, to 
Some means to take anything from me. Stealing from me. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Sit down. Let me just finish. Let me just give you, shall I give you a couple of more? This one I call, listen well, listen well. Body part altars. I'm writing a book. Okay, besides other books I'm writing, I'm writing another book. It is called, okay, I won't tell you. But this altar, I will speak about the details of this altar in that book. Anyway, this altar is called body part altars. What do they put on that altar? They take women's placenta. Okay, women that have given birth at the hospital, right? The doctors remove placenta. Okay, where is your placenta? Huh? Nobody knows. All you know is that they, they, they took it to somewhere and they're supposed to dispose of it, right? You sure? Are you sure that they disposed of it accordingly every time? That out of if a thousand women have babies, that all 1,000 placentas were uh, uh, dis disposed of accordingly. Huh? It's, it's, it's not even the doctors that did the delivery know. This body part alters. They take women placentas. They, from that altar, they dedicate that placenta to the demon of that altar. And then they, be, remember I said altar is a dining table for demons. They begin to look, 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 between the demon and the person, they begin to eat your placenta. Huh? Then you suffer with all sorts of, of, of female problems. All sorts of hemorrhage. All sorts of... of, of <laughs> Say every eating placenta demon. Every eating placenta. Every eating placenta demon. Every eating placenta demon. Let the Father Holy Ghost. Let the Father Holy Ghost. Command what you eat into vomit. Say vomit it. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Sit down. Let me give you one last one. This one is called family altars. Family altars. Somebody said family altars. Like a family shrine. Huh? Have you ever gone to homes and they have an altar and they have a picture of, of the father that died or the mother that died or grandpa? Big picture. And in front of the picture they put a candle. Big one. Huh? This is a family shrine. Family altar. Through that picture, the demon of that altar is monitoring the house. Everybody in the house is being monitored through that picture. Have you ever been in, in a house and, and you look at a picture and say, hey, that, that picture is like he's looking at me. Can, can, I, can, I hear, can I hear somebody here? <laughs> now you know who's looking at you. That, that picture is like, hey, and then you, you go like this, and the eyes follow you this way. You go like, and the, <laughs> am I talking or am I not talking? <laughs> Family altar picture, shrine altar. Ah, uh, as I said, the family member picture that died. They put the, 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 the big candles, Right? Sometimes they'll put a water. Sometimes they put something. And you go. And the ice goes like this. <laughs> put your eyes together for Jesus. There's, there's more, but for the sake of time. Now, quickly. How can we deal with these altars? How many of you are ready to know how to deal? With any altars they are raised against you. Number one, you have to recognize 
their operation. Number two, you have, if they're using effectively that altar, there's something for you that you need to repent of. Otherwise, the reason why they are being effective is because there's an open gate somewhere in your life. Repent of those things in your life that give altars the platform to prosper against you. Somebody say repentance. Number three, you have to renounce them. If you have ever been connected, whether directly or indirectly, you have to do what? Renounce them. It doesn't matter whether you know it or not. As long as your family was involved in some type of evil altar, you are connected. You have to renounce. All right? Number four, you have to resist the operation of these altars by sending acidic, powerful prayers against them to immobilize that demon connected to that altar. Your little prayers, five cents prayers, not going to work. I lay down my heart, my mind to sleep or my body to sleep or how does it go? Myself to sleep and when I wake up, I will not see, uh, I will see tomorrow <laughs> or whatever it is. Somebody said no. That one won't work. Number five. Every altar has a priest. That it is connected. Is operating it. Don't just attack the altar. Attack the priest. Operating the altar. Attack the priest that is putting your name on that altar. Attack the priest that is putting your picture on that altar. Attack the priest that is putting your clothes. Your hair. Your, your, your nails. Your, your undergarment on that altar. That priest. As the altar goes down. That priest also must go down. As that altar must be destroyed. Listen. Because if you let the priest live. He will build another. So as the altar must be totally destroyed. The priest must, must what? Must be. Uh -huh. Attack the priest of the altar. Attack the priest of the altar. You need to get up and pray prayers. You know, the Lord showed me. Okay, Daniel chapter 10, right? Daniel is fasting. How many days? 21. Uh -huh. he's, he's, he's fasting. Uh, 21. Uh, uh, day 1. Uh, day 3. Uh, day 7. He's fasting. Uh, day 10. Uh, no answer. How many of you have ever been? No, you've been fasting, but no answer. Day 11, no answer. Day 12, no answer. Day 15, and now he's weak. He's, hey, this thing is not working too much. But he continued, no answer. But he was determined. Day 16, no answer. Day 17, no answer. Day 18 and 19, no answer. Day 20, no answer. But on the day of 21, what happened? The angel came. And the angel said, they, they, look, this is my version, okay? The angel it, it came to Daniel and said, <sighs> Angel, what happened? He said, look, the, the moment you began to, 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 to petition, to call, to pray, uh, I, I, the answer from your father was given to me to bring you. Uh, but the prince of Persia, the demon in the second heaven, as I went through the spiritual demonic uh, immigration center, he said, hey, where are you going? I said, hey, hey, I'm going to, 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 to Daniel. He said, uh, you're going to Daniel? What, what, what are you bringing to Daniel? What, what, what you have behind you? No, no, I don't have anything. You know, like children? Children, they, 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 they have candy, right? And you tell them not to eat it. And you say, you say, hey, what, 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 what do you have in your hand? They, they're looking at you like this. They said, no, I don't have anything. Huh? Say no. The, the, where are you going? Uh, uh, the, this one is for Daniel. It, 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 what is that? He said because he is asking for this one, uh, and this one is, is is for to answer prayers. He said who? Who? No way. You're not passing through here. You're not passing. From the first day, the immigration center said, "Hey, where are you going?" 
Hey, let me see your papers. Huh? Oh, everything looks, the papers, they look good. But, no way. You're not going to bring that one to this man. For 21 days, he was held up in the satanic immigration center by the prince of Persia. But watch this. Daniel continued praying. The Lord said to me, son, if Daniel has stopped praying after three days, five days, ten days, whatever, the angel will have to be forced to come back. I said, Lord, how is that? I want you to learn this now. He said, when I send my angels, please pay attention. And don't figure it out. Don't, don't put your mind. Some of you are looking at me to figure it out. Don't figure it out. Just listen to what the word of God says. The Lord said to me. Every time my people ask me for something. The moment they ask in faith. Believing. I say yes. At that same moment. And the angel is dispatched to bring it. Watch, watch. I said, Lord, but sometimes we don't get the prayer, the, the answers, the, what we're asking. He said, you know why? Because my people gave up too soon. Watch this. He said, I have built my angels that they must continue to their target destination. As long as the magnetic field of prayer is pulling them towards the person. He said your prayers magnetize. It pulls them towards where you are. They are compelled. They are pulled to come to you as you pray. But the moment you shut your mouth, the magnetic force of the Holy Ghost shuts down and there's nothing else pulling them towards you and then they go back. Are you listening to me? Prayer is your key to your success. I spend more time in my prayer room than I do with my wife. She's sitting right here. But what I do there She's enjoying it out here. You need to pray. You need to pray. The Bible says that men ought always to pray and not to faint. There was a widow in a city. And there was an evil, wicked, unjust judge. That did not fear God, neither regarded man. And the widow came to him and said, Oh, avenge me from my adversary. And the Bible says that the judge would not. But the widow kept on coming. She kept on coming. Avenge me from my adversary. Until the judge got tired. said, okay. Let me just, if for nothing else, let me just answer her, but to get rid of her. <laughs> and the judge did. Jesus used that parable to tell us how we must persevere in prayer. Don't give up. The answer is on his way. I said the answer from your father is on his way. I speak to you on behalf of the father that the answer from the father is on his way. You that are watching me across the world, you that are watching me in every nation, what you have prayed for, God have already said yes. Get ready, don't stop praying. Don't give up. The angel has already been dispatched. The answer for you is on his way. Rejoice, get happy because the answer is coming your way in the name of Jesus. Come on church, put your hands together today. Number six. You must pray to withdraw to remove 
whatever they have put on that altar connected to you. You, you literally have to pray that. Listen, when you pray these prayers, remember Psalms 103 verse 20 and 21? The angels go out and they do the beating, right? And you say this. Let every altar of evil that is carrying my name, whatever they put on that altar, I remove it by the hand of God. I remove it by the hand of God. Watch, 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 watch. Now you're praying according to the will, to the pleasure of God. And the angels must do what? Hearken and go out. Literally, that altar, wherever that altar is, the angels find it. And whatever belongs to you, they remove it based on your word that is connected to God's word. Get ready. The angel is about to remove from the altar of evil whatever they put against you. Angelic host is going to be dispatched and whatever they put on that altar, the angels will remove it. Get ready. Get ready for a removing of the altar service. Put your hands together for Jesus. I, I, one day, uh, 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 uh. okay, forget it. Number eight, after you do that, right? There's, as I said, there's three you must target the altar, the priest, right? Working the altar, and the demons connected. To the altar. And as you begin to do this. You must speak it. You must command it. Listen, listen. Command is different than a prayer. Huh? The prophet in 1st King chapter 13. Did he pray to God? And say, oh God, break, break, break the altar. Huh? Let the altar split, did he say? Did he ask God to do it? Huh? Who made the command? Who made the declaration? Who said, oh, altar, altar. Ah. In order for you to operate in the realm of the spirit, you have been taught to just to pray, God this, God do this. God do that. Oh God, hey God, oh God, oh God. Okay, like the children of Israel said tonight, say, uh, 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 Pharaoh is pursuing them and they saw and they fell on their knees and said, oh God, and God said, hey, is it time for prayer? Move forward. Move forward. Stop praying. I miss. There's a time to use Petition prayer to call God. There's a time for that. But then there's another time. That if you call God to do it. He'll say. Uh -huh. Why did I give you power? Why did I give you the weapons of your warfare? Why did I give you Holy Ghost? Why did I give you my name? Why did I give you the blood? Why? 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 If you want me to do everything. Well then why would I give you everything else? After today. You will learn how to pray. And anything in front of you will not, will not, will not live. Get ready to read the people's death. You will hear of some people dying in your neighborhood, in your, in your city, in your block. I mean, all of a sudden they will find them dead. All of a sudden they'll find them stiff. That's because of the prayer that you will begin to pray. It will be deadly acidic prayer. It will be prayer that will not hold back. Somebody say, I'm already about to pray those type of prayer. Let me see your hand. Let me see your hand. If you're ready to pray this prayer, come on, stand on your feet right now. Listen, I know you're enjoying the video that you're watching and I know you're learning a lot and you're being edified and blessed. I want you to take a moment right now, subscribe to this channel at Citronelli Ministries where you will be blessed with so many other materials, other videos, other content that will strengthen and edify your life in Jesus Christ. The videos of deliverance, videos of teachings, videos of highlights, uh, crusades, and so many other uh, things that you are able to watch and be blessed. Subscribe right now 
And don't forget, don't forget to hit the bell of a notification where you will be able to be notified when we upload any other video in the future. I guarantee you, you will be blessed. Subscribe now.